Dustin can read. Hello there. Welcome to the show. I'm Dustin, of course. Thank you for tuning in to this extra special story special written by yours truly. However, this will be different from previous story specials. Unlike the others, this will not be a third-person narrative experience. Instead, our characters, Dominic, played by me, and Lisa, played by Lauren, along with an incredibly supportive cast of voices, will welcome you into R.L. Stein's fictional town of Shadyside for a true crime podcast with nods to some of the events in the Fear Street series while we poke fun at classic tropes and build to some exciting twists of our own. Also, spoiler warning, we will be giving details of the plots of some of the books in the Fear Street series, namely the Fear Street saga in this episode. So, proceed with caution. This story will be presented in three parts, with our main characters encountering other residents of Shadyside, including some nefarious figures. Again, this is not canon. It's fan-written parody in honor of the upcoming Fear Street movie trilogy, Neither R.L. Stein nor any publishers are affiliated with this. With that said, we hope that you all enjoy part one of The Listener. In 1865, Simon Fear settled in a small, unsuspecting village and a murderous curse began to infect the town. From murder cults to stolen identities to supernatural terrors, the Fear family's evil legacy lives on, especially on Fear Street, where they once lived. Simon says you should respect the past. Simon says you should beware the future. Simon Simon says says die. die. Welcome to the very first episode of Simon Says Die, a true crime podcast about all the bad things that happen around Fear Street in Shadyside, Ohio. Shadyside. What? People do this all the time. It's pronounced Shadyside. I'm not sure that's right. It's spelled Shady. Well, I've lived here my whole life, and I think I would know. Whatever. I'm not saying that. Anyway, I'm your host, Lisa Connor, and I'm joined by my co-host, Dominic Hendricks. Hello, everyone. I'm Dom, your resident skeptic. Yeah, Dom doesn't believe in the curse of Simon Fear. Well, I just don't believe in curses, so, you know. But you believe in ghosts? I believe in energy. Okay, see, we're made of energy. In basic science, we learn that energy doesn't die, so it, you know, it transforms. So since we're made of energy, when we die, we don't really go away. Okay, so that's a yes on the ghosts. (sighs) Okay, it's not as simple as that. (laughs) There's a bit more to it that I'll go into at another time, but for now, why don't we just tell our listeners about us? Yes, good idea. I almost forgot. Like I said, I'm Lisa Connor. I just transferred to Shadyside High earlier this semester and was surprised to learn about this town's messed up history. And how did you learn about this, pray tell? (sighs) I swear you are just... On my first day here, I was standing in my driveway helping direct the movers where to put my boxes when who should appear in my yard. Just your friendly neighborhood Dominic, that's all. And he's been bugging me ever since. Oh, come on, Lise. You need to give more details. You're living out the best parts. Please be my guest. (sighs) Okay, fine. What Lisa has failed to tell you is that we live on Fear Street, 
the supposedly cursed road with the old burned Fear family mansion atop of the hill. Ooh, spooky. You're such a douche. <laughs> hey, now. Okay, so when I walk up to her that day and introduce myself as her neighbor, <laughs> she told me her name was, quote, L double E saw. <laughs> Dude, That's oh how I always introduced myself. I don't know. I just want people to know how to spell it right from the start. I know. I know. I'm weird. Understatement of the year, L double E saw. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so later at school, we we ended up having a lot of the same classes, and we were eventually just paired up for a project for uh, Shady Sides founding. The only two kids in class with brown hair. <laughs> Swear. Our friendship was meant to be, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Seriously, how weird was that? I think it's a bit weirder that most of the school... Hell, most of the town has red hair. What's up with that anyway? I've often wondered the same thing. So anyway, we went to the library and got really into researching Shady Side. I showed Dom all of the old newspapers archived on film, and we found a lot of really bad things have happened in this town, especially with victims somehow related to Fear Street in some way. Either they lived here, or an incident happened to them here. When we finally got to the founding of Shadyside, the Fear family's story stood out the most. You know what's funny? The fact that you still mispronounce your own town's name? <sighs> no, silly. We seem to be the only pair that mentioned anything about the fears in our report. They seem like such a prominent part of Shady Side's history. God, that feels weird. That's right. I'm surprised there weren't more groups looking into the fears. I wonder why no one really touched on that. Maybe our first guest can help us get more information. Excellent segue, Lise. Our very first guest actually helped us out a lot while we were researching our history project. He did. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Bryce Braden, our Shady Side Town historian. Thank you both for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, thank you for coming on to talk about Shady uh, or Shady Side with us. Of course. I'm not very familiar with how this podcasting thing works. It's a bit out of my element being an old baby boomer. I'm still trying to keep up with the latest trends in technology. Unfortunately, podcasts have not been on my radar. Ah, uh, don't worry. We, no one will call you boomer here. No way. Thank you. Mr. Braden. Bryce, please. Sure. Bryce, as you stated, you're of an older generation, and when we met you in the library while we were researching, you said that you have a son in the business as well? Oh, yes. My son Brandon is sort of following in my footsteps. Growing up, he always shadowed my research, and he loved hearing stories about all of the supposedly evil things that happened around Shadyside. Oh, oh, was that that dark-haired guy I saw dropping you off? Yep, that's my son Brandon. He recently moved back to town to take care of me after I fell down at home, hence the cane that I use. He had to leave his job teaching at the university in Columbus, but he's been a big help to me lately. Oh, that's so nice of him to drop everything to mm -hmm. take care of his dad. So, Mr. Bry I mean, Bryce, sorry, what would you say is the most unique fact about Simon Fear? Well, there was a rumor that he once had a silver pendant that was the source of his curse, Ooh. as it were. Really? Where is this pendant today? No one really knows. Some say it's been lost on the Fear family property. Others claim that it was buried with a member of the Fear or the Good family. Wait, who, who are the Good family? Well, you may need an entire episode dedicated to the story, but I'll give you a quick breakdown. What the? In the late 1600s, in Wickham Village in the Massachusetts colony, 
A young teenage girl named Susanna Good was accused of witchcraft because she fell in love with a local boy who was betrothed to another. The boy's father, the town magistrate, accused the girl. It didn't matter that there was no substantial proof. In those times, the town magistrate was to be trusted without question. Poor Susanna and her mother were put through a hasty trial and burned at the stake for the crime of witchcraft. I'm I'm sorry, but what does this have to do with Shady's, Shady Side and the fears? And what is going on with this weird dark music I'm hearing in my headset? Stop. Let the man finish, Dom. Jeez. That's all right, Lisa. Dom, through various journals collected over the years, we've discovered that William Good, Susanna's father, was actually the witch in the family. William practiced in secret, but when his wife and daughter were accused, he tried to speak with the magistrate to stop their execution. However, his pleas fell on deaf ears. As it turns out, the magistrate was named Benjamin Fear, then spelled F-I-E-R, like peer with an F. When Magistrate Fear ignored William's pleas for justice, he sent his brother Matthew Fear to extort money from the poor Good family, promising that they would release the women if William gave them all he had. Holy crap, that's messed up. Indeed, it is. So, okay, let me guess. The Fears didn't free the Good women, did they? No, they did not. After William gave them all of their money, the fears skipped town, leaving Susanna and Martha Good at the hands of the confused and angry villagers, who, despite evidence to the contrary, still believed the scheming fears and burned William's family at the stake. Wow, that's really wild. Is this where the curse supposedly began? What is that music? Shh. Shh. Yes, as I mentioned before, William Good was the actual witch in the family. After this betrayal, he set forth to mark the fears for their sins, and, per his journals, he cursed them to never-ending terror that seems to have continued for centuries. Man, that's really crazy. So, you say that this pendant might be the key? How is that? Well, occultists will tell you that most times a curse must be angered to something. In this case, William Good cursed a silver pendant on a chain. In old portraits and some early photographs, various members of the Fear family can be seen wearing it throughout history. Hmm. You said earlier that the family used to spell the name F-I-E-R. What caused that change? Actually, that was Simon Fear, the most famous of them all. You see, Simon grew up an ordinary boy with dreams of making something of himself. However, it seems no matter what he did, the family curse followed. Soon enough, people began to associate the Fear family name with evil. Eventually, Simon grew bitter, mean, and a bit murderous. He decided to change the spelling of the name to reflect how he thought others saw him, as someone to fear. Later, with his wife Angelica, he would prove them right when he moved to Shadyside. That is so crazy. So, so crazy. I can't Mm -hmm. believe I didn't know any of this. And I grew up here. Yeah, we've heard. (laughs) It often surprises me how little anyone knows of the town's history, since all of it is on display at the Shady Side Museum of History, where I work full time. (laughs) Plug alert. You hear that, listeners? Make sure you go down to the Shady Side Museum and learn some more about the Fear family. Maybe you can help end their supposed curse. Dom, don't. What? (sighs) Anyway, thank you, Bryce, for coming on to tell us a little about Fear Street. It actually helped us introduce our non-local audiences to the show. Yes, thank you. You are both very welcome. I'm excited to hear how your research turns out each episode. Please feel free to reach out anytime you need more information about Shady Side's history. I am more than happy to help in that area. Excellent. We may take you up on that offer. Definitely. Now we've come to the irreverent part of the show. Irreverent? 
Next up is Fashion Victim. Each week, our style correspondent, Jade Nightingale, will point out the hits and misses for all those involved in various crimes involving Fear Street. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks, new girl. It's L double E saw. Shut up. Jade is joining us from her home in downtown Shadyside. Yeah, no offense, but I don't want the smell of your house on my new summer clothes. Um, offense. Anyway, so everyone at Shadyside High knows about Quirky Quirkrin and her sister Bobby and the Shadyside High cheerleading squad. I thought that was all just a rumor. Um, do I interrupt you while you're talking? No, I don't think so. Sorry. Rudeness. So, like I was saying, some horrific stuff went down with the cheerleaders in school, but no one ever talks about the uniforms they used to wear. Ugh. What's wrong with them? I think they're cute. Of course you would, new girl. They are horrendous. The white sweaters, the long pleated skirts, it's just not practical for a cheerleader to wear all that and perform. Do you cheer? Me? A cheerleader? <laughs> no, no. God, no. So how would you know what they would need to Moving wear? on. Next up, I want to talk about this loser, Becca Norwood, who got stalked by some girl named Honey, of all things. Anyway, this picture I found of Becca from some Christmas photo is just... Ugh. First off, the pixie cut is not working for you, girl. She has a weird head, and her facial features are just too big for so little hair. Also, what's with that red shirt? Is it a thermal? Is it a sweater? It doesn't matter. It's tacky. I can see that. Of course you can. You'd have to be blind not to see it, and even that's a weak excuse. Moving on. Speaking of red outfits, let's talk about Carrie Taylor, one of Loser Becca's friends. This girl lived on Fear Street, but somehow got involved in some murder prank thing in Cape Cod. I don't know about that, but this picture of her from that summer, she's wearing a red one-piece bathing suit. Ew. Seriously, girl, it was the 1990s, not the 1890s. Stop being such a prude. <laughs> you know, I heard that my idol, Riva Dalby, once invited her on a skiing trip and then just left without her. <laughs> Classic Riva. I miss that bitch. Well, okay then. Thanks for that, um, interesting take, Jade. God, that was hard to listen to. Why'd we invite her on again? She practically demanded to be a part of it. So you just let her walk all over you? God, you're such a Becca Norwood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but honestly, she's popular and we need the audience. Gotcha. Well, listeners, since this is our first episode, we don't have much by way of audience comments. However, when advertising the show around town, I posted our phone number to get some suggestions or feedback from listeners. Well, here are the messages that we have received so far. All right, that sounds like a butt dial, maybe. Next. <laughs> uh, is this the voicemail for that lame-ass podcast? I wonder if that Dominic kid's listening. Hey, Dom, how'd you like to do a podcast in the hospital, you freak? I catch you looking at me one more time, you sissy little fairy. Okay, that's enough of that. What's their problem? I don't know. Uh... If you could just call me back. I really want to work things out. I'm really sorry for telling your sister about the no. I didn't know she would get so angry. And a wrong number. Come on, people. Ugh. Another butt dial? Stop the podcast. Or else. Huh? What was that about? It's probably just a stupid prank. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. 
All right, that's it for this episode of Simon Says Die. We want to thank Mr. Bryce Braden for coming on to share some very interesting info about why Shadyside, namely Fear Street, is cursed. Allegedly. Allegedly. Also, I want to thank our fashion correspondent, Jade Nightingale, for her insight, I guess. Be sure to join us next week as we sit down to talk with our new neighbors, the owners of the recently rebuilt home at 99 Fear Street. That house has a very weird history, and Lisa and I have some very strange connection to it. That's right. You'll have to tune in to find out what it is. From Fear Street, this has been Simon Says Die. Stay safe, everyone. I still think it's Shady Side. Oh, Dom. End of part one. Are you excited? I know I am. We would like to thank everyone that provided their voice for this production of our Fear Street parody. I myself would love to thank Lauren, who is X99 Fear Street on Instagram. She has a weekly Fear Street reading hour, and you should check it out. She's awesome. Also, I want to include the rest of the cast for this episode, which was Stephen Trigar of the Composer Chronicles as Mr. Bryce Braden, town historian. Also on board was Katie of The Haunted Outfit on Instagram as resident mean girl Jade Nightingale. Additional voices for audience voicemails included Nate Ortiz of the Film of the Rocks podcast and the upcoming Blue Milk Drop podcast. Also, Chelsea of Weird Mom podcast and a mystery caller to be revealed later. We want to also give a huge thanks to Brooks Leiby for his fantastic original theme music and transitional score. Please check out his SoundCloud account. It's awesome. It's just great. In fact, please be sure to support our entire cast and give their shows a listen or their socials a follow. Simon says. Simon also says to be sure to return next week as the satirical story continues in The Listener Part 2. Again, I am Dustin, and until next time, Dustin can read. Dustin can read.